Hello and welcome to Airlines 101 with Laura. So I have been hearing about an air, a company called JSX and I even saw one of its pilots going through security at an airport and I started looking at this company because I was intrigued by what I was hearing about it. Um, if you take a look at their website or reviews of flights with JSX, you will see that they operate Embraer 135s and 145s. They look amazing inside. Here's an interior picture that I found. And so I went to their website and I thought, this is like an interesting new company. Is it an airline or what? Is it actually an airline? It appears to be an airline. It is operating uh, Embraer 145s like you would find on say American Eagle, um, operated by Envoy operated by SkyWest, operated by Endeavor, you know, different companies. So I went to their website and found that, yes, I can search for flights. They are operating near me. I could fly Dallas to Orlando. There's a whole bunch of dates. It appears to be an airline because there's a whole bunch of different dates I can pick, different price options. Okay, cool. Um, and then I really started wondering, like, what is this? And so I found, though, that they are listed as a Part 135 operator. Now, if you've watched things on my channel before, you know I talk a lot about Part 121 air carrier operations. So we, why are we camping out on Part 135 here with, with JSX? What's up with that? So I want to use this kind of as a springboard to talk about some differences between Part 121 regulations and Part 135 regulations. This is totally not going to be comprehensive. I will put a few little no links that I have found on the notes for this so you can look at other information, do your own comparison and digging around. I also want to be clear, this is not like a some sort of condemnation on JSX or their operating model or anything like that, but I do think it's interesting to look at it and, and how it is operating under Part 135, but with scheduled operations where you can buy a ticket, anybody can go on the website, purchase a ticket, and you're flying on an airline type airplane that you have seen operating under the banner of American Eagle, say, for example, United Express, etc. So let's start with looking at part 121 versus part 135. What is really the difference here? So I've put a bunch of things together. I am not going to go into detail, but under part 121, uh, both pilots have to have an airline transport pilot certificate. Under Part 135, there is no airline transport pilot certificate required. You can be a Part 135 pilot with a commercial pilot certificate. Now, since JSX is operating Embraer 145 aircraft, you do have to have a type rating in order to be pilot in command, but the second in command or the first officer merely needs a commercial pilot multi-engine certificate. No type rating required, no airline transport pilot required. Crew rest requirements. So part 121 air carriers, so the airlines, they have to follow the very stringent part 117 crew duty regulations, which limit the flight hours that one pilot can fly every year to a thousand hours. Okay, under part 135 rules, that JSX would fall under, their pilots could be flying up to 1,400 hours in the same calendar year. So that's a lot more. Um, under Part 135, it's true that if you are legal to begin your crew duty assignment, you are legal to finish even if there are unforeseen delays along the way. That is not possible under the rules that Part 121 air carriers follow. Also, under Part 135, there is no requirement for an uninterrupted eight hour sleep opportunity. Now, if you're interested in the duty rules and stuff, I have some other videos about that. But under part 121, your crew both have to have given to them an uninterrupted eight hour sleep opportunity between their duty assignments, whereas part 135, that's not required. They do have duty requirements, duty limitations, flight hour limitations, but it's not as stringent as part 121. Uh, let's talk about aircraft dispatchers. So under part 121, it's required to have a dispatcher who's supervising the flight, initiating the flight, being um, kept up to, keeping up to date with the flight's progress, 
not required under Part 135. Part 135, it's all on the pilot in command. Whereas under Part 121, operational control is shared between an FAA licensed dispatcher and an airline transport rated pilot. Under Part 135, three management personnel are required in total for the airline, whereas Part 121, five are required. So again, just some differences here. Aircraft equipment. Um, I looked at the list and I found, okay, under Part 121, depending on the size of the aircraft, an automated external defibrillator is required to be on board along with an enhanced medical kit with a lot of extra medical equipment. Um, but that's not required under Part 135. They do have to have a first aid kit, but it's not as comprehensive as Part 121 is required. And just as you know, another, another totally random example, under Part 121, every aircraft has to have a third attitude indicator separate from the pilots and the co-pilots attitude indicator instrument. It has to be lighted and have a separate power source. Um, it can't be connected with any other system. That is not required for part 135. And, and I'm just the tip of the iceberg here. Now, possibly JSX has some of these things in place. Possibly they have a defibrillator on board and an enhanced medical kit. I, I don't really know. But I'm just explaining it is not actually required. Um, under Part 121, you have to have the ability to have rapid and reliable communications with your flights. That is not required under Part 135. Since we have no dispatcher requirement, there is no requirement for having some way to communicate with the aircraft while in flight. And then the last thing I was just thinking through here, uh, under Part 121, you have seen, you have to go through the TSA security screening and Depending on your view of the TSA, that may or may not be a good thing. But this uh, JSX operation operates all from private terminals, so there is no requirement to go through a TSA-operated security screening. Now, once again, there might be security screening that you do go through as part of your flight experience, but it's not going to be controlled by the TSA like you'd see at an airline. I uh, went to JSX website just because I was curious, what are they looking for for their first officer qualifications? Here it is on their website. This is for first officers, and I pulled this a couple days ago. It says you need an airline transport pilot certificate or commercial multi-certificate. They want you to have 800 hours flight time preferred, but if you notice that none of those numbers are minimums, meaning for an airline transport pilot certificate, even if you're a restricted airline transport pilot, you're gonna have at least a thousand hours minimum total time along with other requirements. Um, and you can look up all the flight time hours that you're needed if you'd like to, but basically there is not a minimum number of hours of what they're recruiting for their first officers. Now, maybe this is great for you and you're like, oh, cool, I could get that job without having a thousand hours total time. True, true, but it's just a difference, okay? I don't know anything about their upgrade times or when they're upgrading people to captain, but I just thought it was interesting. Now, how does all this translate? You know, why am I even talking about this? Well, um, part 121, has really stringent requirements and they are there for a reason. So the FAA back um, some years ago had noticed that a lot of operators were operating under part 135 called a commuter type of operation. And they had smaller airplanes, they had pilots with less experience, but they were doing airline type flying and some of it was under contract with airlines. So back then the FAA said, you know what? Okay, we have to have one level of safety. We have to get everybody on the same page. And your companies who are doing this airline style flying, you have to become Part 121 air carriers. You just have to do it because you're holding out to the public. You're offering to transport people. You have a schedule. It doesn't matter that you're, you know, you have a smaller airplane or whatever. Well, so fast forward to now, I find it really interesting that JSX has found a way to somehow operate like an airline, but not fall under Part 121 regulations. So as a little side trail, I wanted to look at some accident rate comparisons. So I went on the NTSB website and pulled this. Now, the um, graph here on the left 
That shows accident rate for part 121 air carriers per 100,000 hours. So actually look at the blue line because the top line is for per 100,000 departures. The bottom is per 100,000 flight hours. So we're looking at in 2019 an accident rate of 0 0.20. And that is extremely low and that is extremely awesome. Yay. Um, and when we talk about accidents, I am not only talking about like fatalities because there haven't really been very many fatal accidents at all. There's been like one passenger fatality since 2009 on part 121 airlines. Uh, but, but this rate here includes all kinds of other things where some metal got bent a certain amount, but yeah. So if you look at the part 135 accidents and I just looked at NTSB and found just fixed wings so we're not including helicopters here. I've included non-scheduled because as you'll see, this actually relates to the JSX model. Um, if you look at this, we are looking at a blue line that shows the total number of accident rate per 100,000 flight hours and the total number of fatalities. Now, um, I did look up some more statistics. Only There was 35 fatal accidents uh, involving business jets in the United States between 2010 and 2020, but that accounted for um, 18 crew and passenger fatalities. So as opposed to the one fatality in the United States since 2009, uh, we've had about 18, and I would have to go back and do the math for the entire period uh, under part 135 operators that involve business jets. Now there was actually way more fatalities than 18 under part 135 if you include everybody, but if we include helicopters, then it includes medevac and that's really not what we're looking at here. So I was really confused after I was doing all this research and trying to figure out like what is going on? How, how is JSX operating 135 as this schedule? But like, I don't understand how. So I, I looked at the very bottom of their page. I found the fine print and I read the fine print. This is the fine print. It says here, flights are operated with Embraer 135, 135 aircraft, 145, 135 by a company called Deluxe Public Charter LLC. They're doing business as JSX Air or Taos Air, depending on what part of the United States they're operating. And they hold an air carrier certificate. Okay, so they have the part 135 certificate. And the flights, it says, are public charters sold by a company called JetSuite X, who is the charter operator. And then Deluxe Public Charter is called the Direct Air Carrier. Okay, so we have to break this down because otherwise you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Laura. What is going on? Okay, and notice that last bit. It says under DOT Public Charter Regulation 14 CFR Part 380. Okay, so I got to have to dig around in this again. And what I found is this. So under Part 135, a company can operate called On Demand Type 1. And they are allowed to do common carriage as long as they have 30 seats or fewer in their airplanes and they don't have a payload of more than 7,500 pounds. So, but I was like, wait, 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 on demand, but they have a schedule. They've got a schedule. Like I, I just looked up their schedule and they have this schedule. I can fly Dallas to Orlando. I can fly Dallas to Houston. It looks great. It's cool. But it's definitely a schedule. So, so what is going on? Well, um, what I found is that essentially Deluxe Public Charter, they're the Part 135 operator, Jet Suite X, they are called a direct air carrier. They don't own any airplanes, Jet Suite X. Jet Suite X makes a schedule that they want to operate, and then they award their scheduled flying to, they award their flights to Deluxe Public Charter, who then does whatever Jet Suite X says. So D Jet Suite X is their customer. And so essentially Jet JSX has several companies set up, but basically they have a company that's selling you the ticket as a direct air carrier under part 180 of the DOT that's allowed. And then they contract the flying to Jet, Jet uh, Deluxe Public Charter. That's the part 135 operator. They can do it because they took their Embraer 145s that are normally a 50 seat airplane, took out 20 seats, nice, more leg room for us, that's nice, um, but 30 seats or fewer is the threshold for part 135, the biggest you can basically be with this with the on-demand 
type one operation, no more than 7,500 pounds of payload. So is this legal? Yes, this is totally legal. Uh, however, it is not a part 121 air carrier. It is being operated under part 135. And as such, there are different requirements. There are, there are different requirements under which they operate. And, and you know, like I mentioned earlier, these are some of the requirements. So hope you've enjoyed this. It's kind of a little bit of a legal deep dive that I got into, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and I hope that this explains something, how it is operating as a scheduled operation, but it's somehow eluding the more stringent part 121 rules. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Look forward to more videos and more deep dives on legal stuff, other part 121 regulation things. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think in the comments? Is this a good plan? What'd you think? Would you fly JSX? Hey, I, I'd probably go. I'd like to try it, but uh, maybe they'll offer me a free flight. 